course, I knew what he wanted to talk about. <laughs> and my first thought was, you know, are you guys even out of high school yet? Are you <laughs> sure you want to do this? Uh, they're both very young. And we talked about that. But I have to say, and I've done my share of weddings, <laughs> um, this young couple, they are young, but they are very sincere. And as I heard their story and all the, the things that led them to this day, I felt very confident in my heart. This is of the Lord. And uh, what God has joined, let not man separate. Let's not get in the way of what God is doing. Of course, they're young. Uh, young is a blessing. Young is a challenge. But you know what? Young is beautiful. And how good it is to find someone, a life partner, while you're young. I met my wife uh, when we were in junior high. We didn't get married in junior high. but we met in junior high. But what a blessing to be able to live their life together as a married couple. There'll be challenges, there'll be, there'll be ups and downs like marriage brings and life brings. But I'm, I'm particularly honored and blessed to be a part of this service for them. As I said, I've just been able to watch them as uh, a wonderful couple in our church. The, uh, the proposal itself was something of a night of fireworks, literally. Uh, the 4th of July Rose Bowl fireworks show is where it happened. Their name was up in lights. He proposed, she said yes, and here we are today. Uh, I wanna speak to them and then I wanna just, uh, a few more remarks to you as the, the guests here today. But the Bible talks very specifically about roles for husbands and wives, how to conduct ourselves, how to treat one another. And uh, these will be familiar thoughts for many and even for Nathaniel and Jacqueline. They, we've, we've gone over these passages, but I want to I wanna call it to attention today. Something about a, a public witnessing of all that we can talk about today just helps commemorate and memorialize this commitment. Nathaniel, the scripture calls husbands to love our wives in the same way that Christ loves his church. Now that's a high calling because we know that Jesus gave his life at the cross for his church. He laid his life down. Jesus did not come to be served. He came to serve. So as you come to, to your marriage, you come with a heart like Jesus wanting to serve and to care for your new wife in the way that Jesus cares for his church. In Ephesians, there are some words that are used to describe how we should care for our bride. We are to nourish and cherish. Nourish, that speaks of provision, that speaks of taking care of the needs, making sure that all that, that she needs to thrive and, and to be healthy and to live her life, that you're, help, you're there to help provide that, that's nourishing. Cherishing speaks of value, speaks of making her significant in your life like a prized possession, something very precious. And so you cherish and you nourish. And I believe, and I believe this is something God has hardwired into our lives, that when a woman feels properly loved, respected, cherished and nourished, the true potential of who she is begins to bloom. And so as you want your wife to bloom, remember, part of the responsibility is in your hand. We can't just say, hey, wives, bloom. Hurry up and bloom. No, you nourish, you cherish, she will bloom. It's natural for her to respond to that type of care and love. Jacqueline, the scripture speaks to you too about uh, how God would call you into this union as a wife. You're called to respect your husband. You're not coming into manage him, control him, dominate him. You're coming to respect in a mutual relationship. He has a role, you have a role. It's an equal valued relationship, but there, there's this idea of allowing God to lead your marriage 
through Nathaniel as God leads him, you're there to respect that, not to alter it, to, to change it, because then you may find yourself fighting against God and the very things that God is wanting to lead you into. So you respect that. You allow him to lead in a godly way. If he's loving you, and then you trust him. And so there's that opportunity for you. No one can lord over you. No one can demand of you these things. These are choices you make. You offer yourself as a gift to Nathaniel. It's a gift that you give in faith, believing that as I give what God has asked me to give, God will bless the marriage and bless me as well. You're called to be a helper. Jesus quoted Genesis when he talked about marriage. Well, that's where God, when creating Eve, said, I'm going to make Adam a helpmate, someone suitable for him. It's not good for man to be alone. I want to bring someone in that will help him. Now, men need help. You have a, you have a, you have a unique opportunity. No one else is going to be the help in his life that you're going to be. It's a, it's a very exclusive place that you have in each other's lives. And so it's a special calling. And I like to encourage uh, brides this way. When Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit that would come after he rose from the dead, he said, I'm going to be with the Father, but I'm going to send who? I'm going to send the helper, the one from God, the Spirit of God, to come and help us live our spiritual lives. So in a way, you have the Holy Spirit's role in this marriage. That's a high calling, too, that you would see yourself in that light, not in a diminished way, but in a gifted and opportunity sort of way. The wife empowers the man. In the same way that you will bloom as, God, as your husband loves and cherishes you, your husband will bloom as he feels you at that side, that respectful helper that's on his team. Uh, that's wind in his sails.